Today, we have another exciting demo where we are going to be showcasing for you the IT asset management dashboard prototype uh, that we were looking to build to really showcase how you can utilize Actiris to be able to note take as well as track all your various different workspaces and VMware that you currently have in place that is either active or inactive. And of course, who is in charge of managing those particular workspaces in VMware. Starting off right here, what we're looking at is a dashboard showing us the homepage and we're getting some quick KPI metrics showing us, for example, how many workspaces we have in place, how many of them have no content and potentially something for us to look into since they're in red and potentially something that's not being used but could be costing us money. How many workspaces of that 48, of course, are not in use? So we can see that 44 are not in use that don't have any content. And then we can also see how many are premium as well as active. On the right-hand side, we can also see, of course, uh, a list, a total list of how many VMs by vendor we have between Microsoft and VMware. We also have navigation buttons on the left-hand side or on the right-hand side right here where we can see, for example, what exactly this button is pointing to and the description of each of the page navigations. And then, of course, we also have the option to click on the buttons below right here to look at information as well as go to different pages if necessary. We can also see our username logged in right here, showcasing that we're currently logged in. Now, let's go ahead and start off with the tenant inventory reporting and management page as a first step right here. On this page right here, we can cur currently see a quick overview of all of our metrics that we were looking at before. And we also have a set of filters allowing us to filter to different views of the data if we want to narrow our focus down. We can also see a table showing our workspace details right here and all the notes that were taken. One great thing about Power BI is we have the ability to look at tooltips to show a quick snapshot of the notes if they happen to be longer than the entire table that's on the page here. We can also use dynamic filtering to click and then have our data filter down to showcase for us all the values that are related to what we're clicking on. And then the same thing goes for other various different items, such as looking at all the workspaces that have dedicated capacity right here. We can also filter to a particular state if we want. So if we want to preset everything to active, we can go ahead and do so. We can also look at things like region, for example, where we can focus on a particular region like North America, for example, and then see all the various different workspaces, how many of them have no content, and of course, see conditional formatting for anything that is not on a dedicated capacity, for example. Now, one great thing about this is we can also control what values we can edit as well. So if we want to focus on anything in the region of North America that's deleted, what we can do is we can click on those two items and narrow our visuals down to show just those items in particular. We can then switch to edit mode where we're now working with Actiris. This right here, what you're looking at is our Actiris table edit visual. One thing you'll notice is that it's currently set to the state of deleted and then also to the region of North America. Now, as an example, if I were to click off of this, what this is going to do is this is actually going to showcase for me all the regions. So you can actually control filtering like any other normal visual um, with our Actiris visuals as well to show just the values you're interested in editing. Now, a great thing about this right here is we have the ability to be able to edit these values. We're right now on a grid mode, meaning that we can click on each individual cell and we have the option to be able to edit any of the individual values. So if I want to change the location, if it had to be changed, I can click on a new value and then save it, and that will be my new value. I can also use note taking. So if I wanted to, for example, type in a very long note, I could do so. The other thing that's great about this is we can also save URLs. So if I wanted to, for example, take this URL, which might be linking to an Excel spreadsheet, for example, I can use the URL add link option and then display this as a helpful link to click on and then check off that I want this to open in a new link right. Now, when the user clicks on this, they're going to be able to navigate to that link. I can hit OK right here and then save my entry. 
And now saving my entry for this particular value will update all my tables. If I change now back to view mode, I can now see the URL link as well as my note. So, and I can also get a quick tooltip on it too. So you can switch between edit mode and view mode. Another option you have right here is if you wanted to, you can also add a new record. And you'll notice here that the record is basically mimicking the previous record that we selected when I hit the Add button. And then what we could do is we can go ahead and change these values. So say, for example, I want to change this to Budget Tracker 2. The functional location, of course, is going to be global. We'll keep all the other values the same. We can make this a pre-selection right here. But for now, we'll go ahead and we'll change the date. So I can change this to 1031. And I can also look for the date in my calendar if I want to, as you can see right here. And then for the note, we'll go ahead and we'll say this is a new workspace. To leave a note and hit OK. By hitting Save right here, not only are we saving this entry, but we're also updating the count of workspaces as well. So you can actually add records if you want to. We can also delete them using the trash can icon. And then we can also turn this off if necessary. Other options we have are to export this data to Excel. We can refresh manually, or we can make a bulk update change to all of our values to represent one particular value, for example. Heading back to view mode, we're now looking at our new record that we just added. And again, we can see the 1031 date. And then we can also see the notes showcasing that this was a new record added. Now, another great thing that we can do here is we can also add records via Excel. So Actiris also comes, comes packed with a Actiris Excel add-in. What's great about this add-in is it allows us to quickly add records into our database. So for example, if I click on the Actiris add-in, I can log in. Signing in with my account, I'm able then to take new records and add them into the database. So let's go ahead and see an example of that. If I go to the Edit Dimension field right here, I can go ahead and search for my dimension. So in this case, I'm going to navigate to the Tenant Inventory Management table and add that in. Now what I can do here is I can add my new records in from a table. So let's say I had to add new workspace tables. I can go ahead and quickly add them here and then hit Save. By saving these records right here, what we have the ability to do is we have the ability to be able to edit them. So let me go ahead now and add these records out. And let's go ahead and put these in. So if we add a new record, for example, right here, we can quickly get this record in. And then what this is going to allow us to do is this is going to allow us to save these records right here by hitting the Save button, and then have them display actually in our table right now. So you, can, you also have the option to utilize Excel to be able to load data. Let's navigate to our next page. On this page right here, we're looking at server inventory. Like the tenant management page, we have the ability to bulk edit our data in Excel so we can quickly load it in. We can also click and then have our data change based on what we select. We can also switch to an edit mode to be able to edit our existing records. Now, one thing you'll notice right here is if we scroll to the right-hand side, notice that this column is locked right here. This is actually what we're calling a core logic-driven dimension. What we're essentially doing here is we're allowing the user to be able to create calculated columns based on a, another column's value. So as an example, what we have here is that the exclusion date is something that a user can change using the date field. The exclusion expiry, expiry review date is set to be seven days later after this. So rather than the user having to type these values in twice, the user can select a new value, save it, and then you'll notice that the exclusion date, if we scroll off to the right, is now seven days later. So you can also create calculated columns based on the inputs coming in from your user that can be calculated based on the new value that's been inputted. So this can be dates, text values, numerical values, you name it. It could be a combination of values based on a combination of values that are entered. So like the previous page, you have the ability to click on different items, 
filter the data, see the data change right before your eyes, and then be able to click around and then, of course, note take and get updates in place. And this can be users concurrently doing this at the same time as well. Moving on to our last page, we have our Manage Tags page. Now, this is another section where you can actually navigate um, to, to different options right here. And what's really awesome about this is we've actually been tracking all the various different entries that have been made so far. So all these values right here are being recorded as we're making these entries. So this is the log table right here. So as an admin, you can keep track of all the records that are coming in, whether they're successful or not successful, and then see the counts over time as to how actively people are participating in this dashboard and making changes. Now we have an example right here, but what you have the ability to do is you can also change these values to any values that you wish. So if you want to edit a particular dropdown selection page, you can do that. Now, for our example right here, we're looking at the regions. So I'm going to flash back really quick to the tenant inventory report. If you look right here at the edit mode, what you can see right here is that when we're looking at a particular region, we currently have four selections. But what if we wanted to add a, a fifth? Well, we can go to our table edit visual and use it in a slightly different way for master data management. So if we wanted to add a record, and let's say that this is going to be APAC, we can save this record right here. This record is going to save in the database. So now there it is. And now if we go back to the tenant inventory management page, we're going to see here that APAC is now available as a selection. So not only can our users concurrently work in the same Power BI report, making data entries or editing entries or editing notes, but we can also control the different values that are available for them to be able to use as dropdown selections, for example. So just like that, you were able to quickly see how we can note take, keep track of all of our various different workspaces, as well as server inventory, use Excel to be able to bulk upload data, add new records, change records, and then of course, master data management where you can manage records that are available to your users that you use for entry. I hope you guys enjoyed this session today. Looking forward to your feedback. And this is Alp Aknas with Actors signing out.